Hey, and welcome to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is a YouTube show. I showcase my recent comic book hauls, comic speculations, and stuff for my collection. All right, got an awesome haul for you guys. This one is uh, one of those hauls where it's just a collection of books that I picked up at different stores over the past month. So, you know, I go to some stores, get a couple here, a couple there. Got myself a nice stack of books to show you. So, it's going to be a good one. But do me a favor, before we get into that, smash that like button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. Sure is that more people will see these videos. If you have any questions what you see in the video, if you like what you see, if you have a que you know a question or you want to say hi or whatever, leave a, get, leave a comment. I'll get back to you accordingly. Again, if you like these type of videos, combo calls, combo comp comic book speculations, comic book collections, comic book mystery boxes, you just love comic books in general, well, you're at the right place because this is called You Love Comic Books. We're here to talk about comic books and stuff that I picked up over the past couple weeks. I am over 900 subscribers. I don't want to give the number because when this airs, I don't know what the number is going to be at. I'm hoping to get to 1,000 subscribers soon. We're almost there. I'm feeling it. So I know that I, I looked at my analytics. At least half the people watching these videos are not subscribing or not subscribed. If you like these videos, smash that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. All right, let's get into that beautiful haul. Transformers number seven. This is uh, the first issue to not have Daniel Warren Johnson drawing it. Jorge Corona. I. Uh, I think that's how you say his name, Corona, uh, does a great job as a fill-in artist, and it's still written by Daniel Warren Johnson. The same energy's there. I enjoy it. This is definitely my favorite comic to read every month. Star Wars number 45, I have not read yet. That is a pretty cool cover, though, with the, uh, with the Stormtrooper. So I'm liking that. All right. One second. Darth Vader 45, read this one. This book is, uh, you know, nothing much happens here. I feel like, you know, for five bucks, you're not really getting a rich story here. I feel like I'm watching one of those, like, random Dragon Ball episodes where it's just Goku walking on the bridge and then you end with him still walking on the bridge. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Um, I will give him this, though. The paper quality on the, the Marvel books, or at least on this book, was much better. Hulk number 10, I haven't read this yet. This is as a fill-in artist. The art, I looked through it, though. The art's kind of weird. And the same weird art is used in issue 11. The, the, the regular artist is doing the covers. All right? Last book of the new books. And then I'll get into the, you know, the older books from the hall. Giant Size Hulk number one. This was, uh, I haven't read it yet. From what I looked at, I skimmed through it. This seems like a complete waste of time at a seven dollar uh, entry fee, six ninety nine. Thankfully, I get a nice little discount at my store, so it was a little less than that. Half the book is just like a reprint, I think, of Hulk three seventy five or something. I don't know, kind of lame. You could probably find that issue in really nice condition for half the price of what this book cost. So, just uh, something to think about. All right, let's get into that, to the Hall Hall. You know what I'm talking about? No, you probably don't. <laughs> All right, I went to an antique store, and uh, at this store, they have books that are, they're all three bucks. Everything's three dollars. So, you're either getting a really good deal, or you're buying like a quarter book for three bucks. I try to find the books that are a good deal. That's just me. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Batman Adventures, number three. Awesome Joker cover. Action Zone, number one. I've never even seen this book before. So this is based on CBS Presents. This is obviously like some Saturday morning cartoon preview. And this is when Wild Cart Cats had a cartoon. Skeleton Warriors. Uh, yeah, I'm going to open it up. I've never even seen this book. I, I looked it up. It's not like it goes for anything crazy. And the book's in decent condition. But that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember the Skeleton Warriors figures. So there's a little comic preview. There you go. There's all the toys. Wildcats had a toy line. Remember that? It's actually kind of cool looking. 
I wonder if uh, Living Skeleton had a, a full. On, there's the Wildcats animated series. They made a they made a comic based on that. So that's pretty cool. And then look, TMNT: The Next Mutation. I wonder if this is based on the live action series. Even though obviously it's drawn, but I don't know if you guys remember um, Saban, Saban, whatever the company that did Power Rangers did a live action Ninja Turtle series in the like the early mid nineties, and that's when we got Mona Lisa in there. That's the that was like the girl Ninja Turtle. I don't know if she was actually a turtle, but so I, I thought that was a really cool find. And then I think this this is the last one, the last find. Steel number 52. Now, the reason why I picked this one up, it's the last issue of the, the original first run of Steel. I always try to find uh, the last issues of series. Print runs are always super low. They're hard to come by. So I thought that was pretty awesome. All right, this is from another store. This is actually me buying one book a week from the store, but I don't know. I don't know if that detail is important. Rocketeer. Number two, they had this for three ninety nine. This has been sitting in there for a while now. I'm surprised no one gobbled it up. It is a Dave Stevens cover. Now it doesn't have the sexy Dave Stevens. I mean, unless you like the Rocketeer, that's uh whatever floats your boat. That's up to you. But <laughs> let me show you the interior art on this issue. And I this has a well. Here you go, Alien Worlds at number two. I actually. Pick that up and showcase that in a previous video. You can check that out. Uh, so there we go. You got your your Betty Page stand-in. His girlfriend, the Rocketeer's girlfriend. And then, oh yeah, there we go. Imagine that was a cover, a Dave Stevens cover. That would be like going for like crazy. That would be like the most sought out cover. <laughs> so I thought this was a really good find, $3.99. It's an really really nice condition and then uh this is another trip marvel's greatest comics number 35 reason why i picked this up it is a reprint of fantastic 448 i think this is the first reprint of fantastic 448 that's the first appearance of silver surfer first cameo appearance of galactus now if you watch my previous video at a comic convention hall I uh, purchased this one already, and I paid, uh, I don't know, a little under 10 for each one. It was like 35 36 37 Those are the reprints of 48 49 50 of Fantastic Four. You know, they only had this one, six ninety nine. I thought it was a great price. And this one, I think, is this is in better condition. Look at that. It's got one little spine tape with this nice black cover I mean, from the early 70s. That's a great-looking book for that age, and I thought the price... This book is definitely going to go for way more, especially as we get close to the Fantastic Four movie. Um, people are going to have a hard time finding that 48 at a decent price. It already is really hard to get unless you're, you know, Uncle Millionaire or something. All right. This is at a, a different store, um, City Records. Uh, my buddies work there and I always like going there and checking out. Their dollar, two dollar bins, and other stuff they have there. Modoc number one uh, for two bucks this is the Scotty Young variant. That's kind of funny. Nice House on the Lake number one, the variant edition uh, for a dollar. Thought that was really cool. And then Nice House on the Lake number one, the regular edition for a dollar. I thought that was really cool too. I've been wanting to pick this up one for a while. So. Uh, here we go. Another one for a buck. Shanna the She-Devil. Frank Cho Art. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this series. I remember that he was working on this for a long time around the time this was coming out. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Justice League number 69, dudes. The Doomsday Issue. I think that's a great book to pick up for just a buck. Happy to grab that one. And then I picked this one up. Now, I'm kind of doing this out of order because I'm going to show you later. I picked up another one. Super Villain Team Up number five. Got this one for $7.50. They, they do give me a little discount, so I would say this was like $6.50. I don't know. Uh, this is the first appearance of The Shroud. This book picked up a bit. It is, um, he is, as far as I know, is the current Moon Knight, The Shroud. 
so this is a pretty cool book to pick up if you can find it for cheap. And uh, this one's in really nice condition and has the value stamp. So happy to have that. All right, this is at a different store now. Uh, I was going through their dollar bins and I picked up some other uh, non-dollar bin books. So here we go. Y2K Comics, number one and number two. Now I think this might be number one actually and this is number two, but these are both issues. I figured why not get this? Yeah, I don't know if anybody, I would imagine most of the people that watch these videos are probably somewhere in the 35 to 55 range of... Uh, Mostly dudes that looked at the analytics. I don't know if there's any women that watch the show. So we could say whatever we want here, boys. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so if you are uh, over 30 or f I would say at least 40, you'll definitely remember the hysteria behind Y2K. Uh, it was the incoming apocalypse that was going to happen because... Computers didn't have like an extra digit or something. So everybody was making all kinds of crazy things were going to happen at the when the the strike the clock strike at midnight and it was the year 2000. Everything was going to collapse society like there were people building bunkers. It was nuts. So I feel like this is like a cool little piece of history and to get these for just a buck each and they're in great condition. There's a little bit of weird nostalgia behind the whole thing. So happy to grab that. And uh, also, you'll know the reference uh, about the decimal. It's part of the plot of uh, Office Space. The uh, classic, uh, what's his name? Dude who made Beavis and Butthead. He made that movie Office Space. And that's like the plot is about them working on the programming to fix Y2K. All right. Action Comics 643 for a buck. This is a uh, bit of a key. It's kind of like when the series, I guess, restarted after Crisis. And it's got awesome George Perez breeding art. Uh, if you just saw the Justice League 69, uh, I found Justice League number 70, the third print. This is obviously the next issue, that funeral for a friend. That I thought was pretty cool to pick up for a dollar. Max, number one for a buck. Really nice condition book. This book is picked up a bit. Supposedly Channing Tatum's making a movie. We'll see if that happens. We'll see. But for a buck, I don't mind owning another copy of the Max. X Factor, number 23. This is the first appearance of Archangel. I don't know if it's like his, considered his first cameo appearance. So that's pretty cool. X Factor 62 with an awesome Jim Lee cover. He does not do the interior art of this one, but he does a sick cover. And I think this is the last issue of the Extinction Agenda story. So X Factor 37 with awesome Goblin Queen. This one's in immaculate condition. The Inferno issues. And so is this one with Jean Grey going against Goblin Queen. I don't know if you guys are watching that awesome X-Men cartoon. X-Men 97, but we got the Goblin Queen in there. So there's been a little bit of hype behind that. X-Men 196 for a buck. This is a controversial issue. Kitty Pride says a, 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 a bad word. I'm not going to say it. Uncanny X-Men 274. I thought this was a great get. It's kind of like a mid-grade copy, but this is a great get because, again, this is... If you guys are watching X-Men 97, it was that amazing... Did you guys watch that episode 5? I don't want to spoil anything. But that episode was so good. And we got a little bit of a flashback with Rogue wearing the same costume where she kind of meets with Magneto in the Savage Lands. And it's basically coming right out of this issue. This is kind of like, I think this is the issue where we learn that Magneto can touch Rogue. Rogue that's the whole thing. Rogue is like that, she's that beautiful, like, heroine that we're all like, oh my God. And, and she's so hot and everything, but she can't touch anybody. Because she's cursed because her mutant powers. If she touches people, she doesn't just take their powers. She, like, could put people in comas. So Magneto, you find out something to do with his powers. He is able to touch her. And then and they did that in the recent cartoon. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right. And then these books were a little more. Four bucks for this one. Evangeline, number one, the max, the photo cover. And then Evangeline number number one, I got this for six, is the Chromium cover. I figured I, I would have liked to pay just a buck for these silly books, but like, now this is some spec. They announced 
Margarabi, uh, Margarabi, yeah, Barbie, Harley Quinn, uh, Amelia Blunt, and, and, is that it? I think, yeah, her too. Uh, supposedly they're working on an Evangeline movie. <laughs> Sounds absolutely insane. This character from the 90s, Maximum Press, Rob Liefeld. Uh, but supposedly that's the deal. They're making a movie. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe I could put my kid through college with this book. You know? We'll see. That's what... <laughs> and then the last one from this store. I picked up... This is the first copy I picked up of this book. Of Doctor Doom and the Savage Samarina Super Villain Team Up number five. This one was six. Again, more than I wanted to spend. And, I, and it, it's like a, not a, it's like an okay condition. I would say it's like a VG fine. But the bad thing about it is it's missing the value stamp. This one, which I, which I picked up like a week later for like pretty much almost the same price. This one's in pretty much near mint condition. And it has the value stamp. So, I don't know. Should I have waited to, you know what? It doesn't matter. I got a little, well, I got a little FOMO, you know, FOMO. That's, it's part of the hobby, dude. Everyone, they won't admit it. Most of the hobby is FOMO, fear of missing out. So I thought that was, hey, happy to have those either way. So that's it for that. And now we'll, we'll move on to the last books of the haul. So do me a favor. If you haven't already, smash that like button. If you have any questions or anything, leave a comment. I'll get back to you accordingly. Smash the subscribe button. If you if you are feeling it, you want to be part of the Yule Complex conversation. All right, let's do this. Got these at Second and Charles. I got these for pretty much for free. I had a $5 gift card thing. Supernatural number three. Supernatural number two. And Supernatural number one. So I think I ended up paying like 97 cents or something when it was all said and done. Uh, they were, these are $1.95 each. This is based on the Supernatural series from CW. I don't think you guys realize, like, I never cared for that series. This, I literally just picked these up to, um, you know, probably flip them or whatever. Uh, we'll see. Maybe they'll announce a Supernatural reboot of some sort. But I figure this is a good book. It's also done by Brian Wood. That's pretty cool. Uh, cool covers as well. But this series was huge. It was on for, like, I don't know, over a decade on CW, like, I worked in licensing, so I remember hearing, like, the property was so big at, like, Hot Topic for years, so I figured, why not? All right, this is another trip to Second and Charles. This one, I don't know if I had a coupon or whatever, but these were, this one was two ninety five. dollars Marvel Universe, number uh, update 89, number 8 with Venom on the cover. Kind of a funny Venom, looks more like the McFarlane, he doesn't have the sharp teeth yet. But this is a pretty cool book to get if you're a Venom completist, especially an early Venom appearance completist. This is this is an early cover appearance. I mean, this is I mean, this is like I think before he comes back in uh, issue three fifteen, three sixteen of Amazing Spider Man. So that's pretty cool. Savage Dragon two twenty three. I figured why not? A lot of I used to read Savage Dragon. I kind of stopped after one oh two. That 102 is the uh, Invincible preview issue, just in case you guys are wondering. I'm glad I stopped at that issue because that's a over a $100 book. <laughs> Savage Dragon 223. The thing is, any of these books from like the two, 150s, 200s, the print, the print numbers are so low. So there's people who missed out on these books and they on average go for at least 10 to 15 bucks each. doesn't even matter what the issue is. This is pretty cool. The Spawn Bible. It's kind of like uh kind of like this book in a way, you know, just like a thing that describes the characters. So that's pretty cool. Nice fake leather print book. This is awesome. Franken Castle number 21. This is actually a really good book to get. One that's got it's the last part of the when you know, I don't know if you guys remember, but Punisher Frank Castle became Frankencastle. He became literally Frankenstein for a while. <laughs> but it's got the interior art is awesome. It's like a half and half book. It's like a preview for the next series where the Punisher's back and, uh, you know, back to basics. 
But this is the last issue of the series. And this goes for a decent amount. A lot of the Frankencastle books go for a decent amount. Uh, who's the artist? Dan Brereton. He does a lot of painted art. But it's really cool. He's with like the Legion of Monsters here. So I, I don't know what the story is. But like you got Frankencastle. But then you've got normal. Kind of normal. He looks like he's in the Misfits. Uh, Punisher. And then uh, Bloodstone is in this. Let me see if I can pass it back. So there you go. Look, there's a Morbius and Werewolf and Blood, Alyssa Bloodstone. This is like such a well done. I, I just love the art on this. This is like a fun book to get. So really cool. And like I said, the, the series, it kind of, let's see. I know I'm like, we're done. I don't know, I guess he's done, he pulls out, I guess he had the bloodstone in him, yeah, look at that, he yanked the bloodstone out, and he gave himself a, well, I'm not gonna say what that looks like, and then weeks pass, and it's back to just being the Punisher, <laughs> just boring old Punisher, you know, too good to be in the monster universe of uh, the Marvel, so I thought this was a great book to pick up, especially, this book can go for like 20 easily, so... Happy to grab that one. And then this one, this one's the best one of this little group I'm going to show you. And then there's a couple more I have. Avengers West Coast 94. This was only $2.95. Uh, this was a good, uh, what do they call it, snipe? You know, when you get like a book for like a really cheap price, or like underpriced or whatever. This is the first uh, War Machine. James, James Rhodes? Uh, yeah. As War Machine. It's in this issue, Avengers West Coast 94. So this is a bit of a key, a uh, bit of a war machine key. So that's pretty awesome. All right, last three books, and then the whole is done. We got Darkstalkers, number 2A from Udon. Figured, why not pick this up? I think this was like three or four bucks. Anything with this character on it, I don't know, I totally forgot her name. Darkstalkers is an awesome, it's like the, basically the Legion of Monsters, like that Frankencastle. But in the Street Fighter universe, Darkstalkers is its own game and everything. And, uh, man, I totally forgot her name. But anything with her on the cover, like, this is like a $30 book easily. SpongeBob number 80. I, I, this was $2.95. I had to pick this up. The later issues of SpongeBob, especially, like, the crazier covers, they're just so sought out. Like, I don't know what the print run one on these were. This is like towards the end of the series. You never see SpongeBob comics. You rarely do. So happy to grab that. And then the last issue of the whole Powdered Toast Man uh, special from Ren Stimpy Show. I didn't even know this book existed. I had another Powdered Toast Man comic. It's got a white cover. Um, but this is this came out later. It's in a newsstand too. It's in really nice condition. Uh, thought this was awesome. So front and back cover so yeah that's really sick <laughs> i'm happy to grab that i didn't even know this existed this one so so yeah nothing like insane in this hole you know what i mean nothing like uh, i know i'm sorry i don't have like the first appearance of the uh, i don't know the riddler <laughs> but hey i got the first appearance of uh the Shroud. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah. If you like these holes, you like complex speculations, all that, do me a favor, smash that like button. If you like the video, I would appreciate that. If you have any questions what you saw in the video, leave a comment. I'll get back to you accordingly. If you like these type of videos, complex holes, complex speculations, complex collections, complex mystery boxes, complex, etc. Smash that subscribe button. Become part of the Yellow Complex conversation. You're going to see a previous video here. You're going to see a previous video there. You're going to smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.